it's the narrow boats and their people who still cradle the old traditions of the canals. Generation after generation has been born and raised within the few square feet which are at once their living and their home. But the canal folk are proud of their traditional brasswork, their paintings and their china, and such a tradition of work and craftsmanship dies hard. But although the canals are tideless, time has turned against them. Neglect and deliberate financial sabotage by the old railway companies have taken heavy toll of what was once a brilliantly engineered communication system. Yet our overcrowded roads offer only small savings in time and are frequently more expensive per tonne mile for certain types of bulk cargo than the deserted canals. And this same overcrowding has encouraged a new race of canal people to take to the waterways purely for the joy of it. Some keep their cruising craft on a pleasant reach. A few prefer complete freedom of choice. The modern outboard engine has undeniable advantages over the horse. But naturally, in any well-conducted crew, it's still women and children first. The enjoyment of the canals is not confined to the private boat owner. When John Nash designed London's Regent's Canal in 1810, he prophesied an annual quarter million ton traffic. His figures were soon to prove conservative. Today, the Regent's Canal is a splendid way to go to the zoo. Sorry comment on the state of some of Britain's rivers. But the Agecroft Rowing Club have been rowing on the Irwell for a hundred years. 